Welcome to our lecture online. Now here before us we have a very interesting, perhaps strange, contraption. What we have here is we have a wheel of mass M that's free to rotate on frictionless bearings. We wrap a string around that wheel and at the end of the string we place an object with mass 2M. We let things go and the wheel begins to accelerate in rotational motion the object begins to accelerate downward when acceleration equals to g over 2. On the other side, we have a brake that's being pushed into the wheel to slow down the acceleration because of the friction force generated by this normal force called friction force. The heat generated in that braking action is then allowed to go into a container that has a liquid of mass m over 2 and specific heat equal to c. Now the question is, what is the increase in the temperature of the liquid in the time period from t equals 0 to t equals t? Assuming that at t equals 0, omega equals 0, there's no rotational motion, everything starts from rest, and in the time period t, what is the temperature rise t of the liquid in that bucket? Assuming the bucket itself does not absorb any of the heat. Wow! Where do we even start? Well, the best thing to do is to use the concept of the, the angular acceleration due to the torque generated by both the tension in the string and the friction force here and from that try to calculate the friction force. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to take the equation F equals MA and find the rotational equivalent which means the net torque on the system is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Of course, the moment of inertia, it being a solid wheel, would be equal to one-half mr squared because the mass of the wheel is equal to m, rate is equal to r. The net torque is going to be the tension times the moment arm r, so that's the tension times r, which is the torque which causes the acceleration of the system, minus the torque generated by the friction force, which is friction force times r, that equals the moment of inertia, which is equal to one-half mr squared, times the angular acceleration. Now we have to uh, find an equivalence of the angular acceleration in terms of the linear acceleration. We know that A is equal to R times alpha. So alpha is equal to A divided by R. So A divided by R. So right away we notice that on the left side we can factor out an R. On the right side we have an R squared but have divided by R. So this R cancels out that R and now we can see that the R's cancel on both sides of the equation so that the tension minus the friction force is therefore equal to one-half MA. Now, what about the tension in the string? So for that, we can say that it's going to equal to the mass times the acceleration to gravity minus, because it's, it's going downward, minus the force required to keep it, let's say, let me try that again. Whenever we have an object hanging down from a mass, let's say it's equal to m, and it's accelerating downward acceleration a, then the tension in the string is going to be equal to mg minus ma. So we're going to use the same principle over here. The tension in the string is going to be the mass, which is in this 2m times g minus 2m times a. So we'll write this as 2m times g minus 2m times a minus the friction force is equal to one-half m times a. All right, we have a 2m a and a one-half m a here. If I bring that one-half m over here, we can consolidate those two terms. So let me get rid of this. So now we're going to consolidate those two terms. So we have 2mg minus 4 halves minus a half, which is minus 5 halves ma equals, because I moved this to the left side, I moved that to the right side, the friction force. There we go. We're almost there as far as finding the friction force. Now, of course, we're going to replace a by g over 2. So that gives us 2mg minus 5 over 2m times g over 2 is equal to the friction force 
So now when we combine these two terms, we have 5 over 2 divided by 2, it's 5 over 4, so 2mg minus 5 over 4mg is equal to the friction force, and finally the friction force is equal to 8 fourths minus 5 fourths, or 3, let's see, uh, 8 fourths minus, or 3 quarters mg. There we go. So now we found the friction force caused by the brake. Now we need to do the work done by the friction force. In other words, the heat generated will equal to the work done. So the work done is equal to the force, in this case the friction force, times the distance traveled. Now that means the tangential difference distance of the wheel as it travels in time from t equals 0 to t equals t. And it's accelerating at acceleration equal to g divided by 2. So therefore, the distance traveled can be expressed as work is equal to the friction force, which of course we know what that is now, times the distance traveled, which is 1 half, times the acceleration, times t squared. 1 half at squared is the quadratic term that gives us the distance, if of course the initial distance is 0, and the initial omega, or the initial velocity, equals 0, so we only contain the third term of that equation. Now plugging in what A is equal to, which is G over 2, and what the friction force is, we can say now the work done is equal to the friction force, which is 3 quarters mg times 1 half times acceleration, which is G divided by 2 times the T squared. And now we have the work done by the friction force. Now let's, uh, let's see here, we have G squared, we have 4, that's 16. So that means that the work done is equal to 3 sixteenths m g squared divided by t squared. All right. Now the last thing we need to do is find the temperature gain of the liquid in the bucket. For that, we need the following equation. We need the equation that Q is equal to m c delta t. Now I'm going to use the big M here because it's independent of the mass symbol that we use in the problem. And Q of course is going to be equal to the work done because all the work done is going to be generating all the heat. And we need to change in the temperature which means a change in the temperature is going to be equal to the work done divided by mc. Now in this case the mass is going to be m over 2 so this is going to be equal to the work done divided by m over 2 times c, and of course the work done is given to us right here, let's see, right here, so we have the delta t is equal to the work done, which is 3 sixteenths m g squared t squared divided by m over 2 times c. Now of course this 2 and this 16 cancels out, M and M cancels out. We have an M here, we have M here. So now finally, we can combine everything. We can say that the change in the temperature from T equals zero to T equals T is equal to three eighths, and let me put the one over here, three eighths G squared T squared divided by the specific heat of the material. And there it is. The change in the temperature from T zero to T equals T of that interesting contraption when all the heat generated by the brake is placed inside the liquid. And that is how it's done.